Hello and welcome to Strat News Global. I'm Parul Chandra and with me today is the Ambassador of Germany to India, Walter Lindner. And uh, we're going to be talking about the recently released uh, German policy on the Indo-Pacific. It's uh, created quite a bit of waves and uh, is also being seen in fact as uh, somewhat of a move to counter China. And uh, uh, let's talk about Ambassador Linna about this policy. Welcome to Strat News Global, Ambassador Linna. Thank you, Paralju. It's good to be here. Uh, let me begin by asking you, what is the reason for Germany to come out with this policy just now? It's been just, uh, I think, about three weeks since you came out with it. Yes. You see, before I came to India, I was Foreign Secretary in the German Foreign Ministry. So I had mm -hmm. quite a good overview of our policies uh, around the globe. We had one a, a strategic paper towards Africa, our Africa strategy and the Latin America strategy and also some to the Middle East and Trans-Pacific. But we didn't have something similar to the Indo-Pacific region. <coughs> it's not because we were not interested, but the importance of the region has increased during the last five, ten years. Mm -hmm. Uh, both economically and politically. So it was, the time was ripe to have something coherent which brings all our ministries together and which takes an, an, a, a, a more global look on this area uh, in different aspects and to see how can we be a more active uh, participant in the area. Uh. You, you, you've said that uh, it's been, say, in the works for some time, but really what is being uh, noticed in, in present times is the timing of, of the policy, given yeah. that... Uh, uh, you see, some of the things have been there already, like uh, two, uh, one, one half of the global population lives around this area. So four billion people live there. This is not new, <laughs> but... It, in addition to other factors, it, it, it's relevant. You know, the, you have, I guess, 35 um, megacities, which means a megacity is a city beyond 10 million. So we have in the world maybe 35. 20 are in this area. Three of the main, the, the, the three main economic powers, which is number one, the US, number two, China, number three, Japan, by the way, number four would be Germany. Uh, the three most important economic powers are in the area. 40% um, uh, of the economic world production is done in this area. And this area has a, a, a young population, well educated, um, some uh, very w well advanced in um, you know, artificial intelligence, IT. And the, so this is a dynamic region of the world. Um, on the other side, it's a world with a lot of, uh, an area with a lot of challenges. It's an area where you have three at atomic nuclear powers. So it's, it's, it's India and it's China and it's Pakistan and maybe also North Korea, uh, some program. So any trouble, any um, uh, disturbance in this area has a direct impact to the rest of the world, and especially for a country like Germany, which is one of the most uh, uh, important trade, trade countries in the world. So we live from trade. Our, our economy booms and our jobs depend on, the, on, on, on ex exports, so trade. So we need a free flotation of goods around the globe. Mm -hmm. Now, a, a, a big part of this flotation goes through the Sound of Malacca, which is in the area. So, you know, there are, every day there are 2,000 huge container ships going through this sound of Malacca, 2,000. So what maybe some people don't, don't know, 90% of the world economy is done, transported through sea. Uh, yes, the maritime. The road. maritime, yes. 90%. And 40% of that goes through the sound of Malacca. So this is such an important area that, you know, more and more it was visible that you have to have a more uh, coherent uh, um, strategy for this mm -hmm. place to see that um, we are not just bystanders but we take an active, a, a more active part in this. So it's got nothing to do with uh, a countering China kind of strategy for Germany or 
Oh. Well, it has to do also with China because China is a big part of this area. Mm -hmm. And you know, we have close relations with China. We are trading partners. Yeah. Um, but we are politically, we have not the same system. We have differences in, in, in our political system, so it is a competitor, a, a system, system, system competitor to us. We are a democracy, they are not. India is a democracy, they are not. So India, but we, you do trade not only with those countries which have your same system. If you do that, then the, tra the trade would be very limited. You can trade maybe with 30, 40 countries. So there are a lot of countries in the world which, which have a different system, you are not agreeing with it, but still you do some trade. We've, of course we have some, some thresholds and we have some limits, we have some um, values and some uh, <coughs> ethic borders where we don't do any, we wouldn't do it with North Korea. But as I said, uh, we are doing trade with all these countries which are around uh, this area and so it of this st strategy or this paper is dealing with all the countries. But of course, it is especially um, directed to show that we are not focusing on one country, but on more countries. So it is a multipolar world and equals among equals. So we are diversifying our interests in the area and our trading partners in the area. So. Um, if you say this is directed towards China, this is your take of it. I say it's not against China, but it is in favor of a multipolar system. Uh, will this impact uh, Germany's ties with China? Do you think this could happen? Well, the, the Chinese government knows how important the German market is and uh, how our products uh, are important. So we, have, we are good trading partners, you know. But of course, we, uh, we, they, they also know that we have our values. So when the Chinese foreign minister was in, in Europe, he was told by many of foreign ministers, including our high commands in Germany, uh, that we are not agreeing what's happening in, uh, Hong, in Kong. Hong Kong or what's happening in, you know, with the minorities in the country or other things. So we, we raise these topics sometimes behind closed doors, mm -hmm. not with a megaphone, but sometimes openly in press conferences. So they know that we, 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 uh, we, uh, we agree to disagree, you know, in, in, in many of these aspects. And they will read this strategic paper also, and they will also see it's not directed against them, but it is um, directed towards all the countries in the region, which um, uh, are, you know, important partners. And we are especially focusing on those who have um, similarities in our values. Uh, Ambassador Lindner, now that uh, we're talking about China, uh, my next question is about uh, what does this mean? What does the document mean for uh, Germany and the US? I mean, does it imply that Germany is now kind of getting together with the US on, on the Indo-Pacific? Well, you know, the, the, the US, make no mistake, they are our closest ally apart from the European Union friends. They are our closest ally. They liberated Germany from the Nazi. They <coughs> rescued Europe in the Second World War. They helped us, the Germans, to get on their feet again after the war. They were on our side when the Cold War was there. So the Americans, wh whoever is in the White House, it doesn't matter of this person or that person, the American people and the, the, the States is, is, is the closest ally to us. But of course, um, this is also, you know, when I talk about multipolar world, it means we should not go back in, in the areas like the Cold War, where you said, okay, you have two poles in the world. One are the good ones and these are the bad ones. The world is too complicated for that. So we have allies and in the NATO and in, in other parts, but we have also close friends in India, which are not in the NATO and which are, still very strategic partners to us. It, 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 it means we have a, a complex world where there is not one hegemon who rules the whole world and, and who dictates because of its size uh, the rules. We are very strong in favor of uh, rule-based uh, international order mm -hmm. and, not, and, and, and it, it is the, 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 the strength of the law and not the law of the strength. You know? So that's why 
it's important who, to, who, whoever it concerns. You know, but uh, as I said, with uh, the U.S. is a democracy, and you know we share many, uh, many values are just the same. Uh, so it is the strategy. The, the U.S. has a lot of uh, strategic interests in the area, yes, too. But we also have our interest in keeping things calm and doing things through moderation, and having uh, systems there which are multilateral and not dominated by one mm -hmm. power. Uh, Ambassador Lidna, I, let me draw your attention now to uh, this, uh, what has been said by the German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas. And he said that we, wa we want to help shape that order that's based on rules and international cooperation and not on the law of the strong. That's why we have intensified cooperation with countries that share our democratic and liberal values. And there is also the, poli pol the policy also talks about human rights. Now, again, here again, who is the policy yeah, I mean, uh, to, pointing yeah, you know, I mean, to, towards? As, yeah, as I said, uh, this, the human rights we raise with, every, with, with everyone. It's, it's, it's easier with those countries which share our values, you know, who are democracies mm -hmm. and others. other countries where they have a different understanding maybe of, of some of the values. There we, we raise it um, even more urgently. As I said, with China, the, the question of Hong Kong minorities and other things, and, and um, you know, without going into the details, but there are quite some topics which we uh, raise when the Chinese are there. The, the reaction is always the same, mm -hmm. saying, well, this is our, our internal uh, issues. Don't get involved in our own sovereignty. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's, that's how politics works and democracy, uh, the, the, the diplomacy works. You raise it, sometimes publicly, sometimes not publicly, and maybe through baby steps you get to a point where you get a kind of an agreement. You know, we lived, as I said, for 40 years in separation, mm -hmm. separated from the East Germany. Uh, uh, the Cold War were running through Berlin and through Germany. So 40 years we didn't give up hope and we, with baby steps, with little talks here and talks there, we got closer. So the, the, the two countries got closer and the, the, the Soviet politicians, they changed a bit. So with, with Gorbachev, so we came closer. So the same is if you don't talk, let's say if you make uh, just a black and white policy in, uh, towards China and say, you know, you're not talking anymore, it's not possible. This is such a big country, you have to, to talk and you have to see whether you can through our uh, our influences change uh, also some values there. Uh, now your foreign minister has also spoken about Germany working together with France to have uh, work on something like a European Indo-Pacific strategy. What does that mean? Well, in, indeed there are other countries who have uh, this strategy which, is, which are in the region like Japan, like South Korea, like the US, like uh, Australia and France. From, from, from Europe. So we are the, the second country from Europe which has also a strategy like this. And since the Germany and France are, you know, it's, it is our closest ally anyway. If we do something um, uh, together, then the EU is moving forward. So it's a kind of a motor of the EU. So uh, I, don't, I don't know how far we will get there, but since two countries now have this kind of strategy, we will have discussions in Brussels and see mm -hmm. whether we can do the steps towards a European strategy to the area. But this will be discussed in Brussels and uh, might take a bit, but uh, I think it's already um, quite a sign that the, 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 the motor countries in Europe have a strategy now. And, and so maybe this leads to something, but I don't want to anticipate that. Let's, let's see what the discussions bring there. Uh, India also has an Indo-Pacific Indo vision. Yeah. So uh, how do you see Germany working together with India you see, vision. we share quite a lot of same um, values from democracy to the uh, 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 federalism, but also to the to tolerance, you know, and, and, and this kind of values and to the respect towards U United Nations, multilateral. So India is a huge factor in multilateralism and so is Germany. We, we know that we are 
depending on a, on, a, on a working UN system, we are also together at, with India in a, in, a, in a reform group reforming the United Nations, especially the Security Council. And we are working in peacekeeping missions with the Indians together. So, and, and the idea of, if you read uh, Foreign Minister Chashanka's new book about relationship towards China, it also talks about the multifaceted complex reality of today, where you have to have different centers in this world, not just one pole or two poles, but there are more, and you have to see how do you strike balances there. And so Germany is pretty much the same since, uh, as I said, for coming from a two world wars and from a de devastated Europe, mm -hmm. we know that we have to you know, move forward to a, to a direction where we, we talk to each other and where we find compromises for a better future. Ambassador Linda, my final question. Does this policy mean that Germany is moving away from China? As I said, this is not moving away from something, it's moving towards a more multipolar system. It's not moving away. Um, we know that we have a good relationship with China, but we know also the limits and we know also um, where we agree and where we don't agree. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's rather um, an, 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 an illustration that we go more into the depth of the area, more different countries and um, see that we can diversify um, production lines, uh, uh, supply chains and this kind of, so we take into consideration all other nations there, not just one. Ambassador Linna, thank you so much for sharing your insights on, the, on Germany's Indo-Pacific uh, strategy. Thank you.